Okay guys, so in this video we're going to talk about models. So let's get into it. So basically what we're going to cover is the problem with permutations, how most solve this problem, and just an alternative approach that you should consider if you have a similar sort of use case to what I have been dealing with a few times now. So when we talk about models, so there are certain models that stay fairly stable and often just contains pretty much the same information. Now usually if you have a simple system something like a user is something that stays fairly much the same. It's not something that it's not a model that has all that much differences in information. So if you have an admin, it's almost the same thing as a user and so forth. But then you have models that are very chaotic or have a fairly large difference in terms of what they actually contain. An example of that would be an order. Now, if you have a web shop and the only thing you're selling is, say, books, and the only, the only supplier or manufacturer you have is one single company, and they always require the same information when you're placing an order, well, then that's a pretty straightforward thing. But the reality is often that you might be selling multiple different types of products on your platform and different manufacturers, even in the same, same business or the same industry, will have different requirements on order information. So I'm just going to walk you through an example of how quite a lot of people solve this sort of problem. So here we have an application here and now we're just pretending here. So we have three different markets where you can buy things in our little nice application here and then we will talk about the administrative stuff and the fields just later but that's pretty much it so we were just pretending now so here I am in the Swedish version of the application and I can place an order I can say something like that something like this and I don't even give you a real phone number and a personal number is just something that is really Swedish specific and now I'm just pretending here I am this was a checkout basically I just made I placed an order right now if I go to something like say Denmark now you see that the fields are a little bit different so we used to have a personal number here and here we have something called CSP everything else is the same same thing yada 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 and some random number here and that's the model that we're supposed to be storing or that's the JSON the, the the form data that we just submitted and then finally we have one more permutation we have an English version of the website where now we don't even have the this concept of a number we have something else now this is extremely common that you require different information from a user when you're placing an order of some sort and this is something that quite a lot of people solve in pretty much the same way. So most will solve this problem in this fashion here. So what we will do is something like, okay, we will create, a, this is a very object-oriented pattern, should feel very familiar to the people who are diehard C-sharp and Java fanatics here. So you have some type of a base order where you have the common information and usually that's going to be a, ID, who placed the order, when was the order created, and what state is the order in. We can see here, like, it's a new order, and it's a delivered order, or it's been sent. There can be many more states, but usually an order can be in many states. And then we have a Swedish order that contains pretty much the same, like, it's just all these fields plus the personal number. And then we have a Dan Danish order which is these fields plus the CSP and then we have an English order which just contains these fields. I mean we could if we wanted to be extra like a little bit ahead of time here we could actually put these things into the base order as well but usually I try to avoid doing things like that to be premature when I do my abst abstractions because odds are that we might get a Belgian order or like um, I don't know an Australian order and in that case we don't even have the phone number we're just gonna have the name and the email or something like that but this is how you would do it now the issue we have with this is that as you can see here there's a bit of typecasting that needs to happen. So if I want to figure out which of these orders I have to deal with, I actually have to do, usually what you have to do is that you have to do a switch statement or something of that nature and match on each of these models. Now, 
this will work. This is a very nice approach if for some reason you have quite a lot of business logic that is tied into the knowledge of what's contained within these orders. So this is the standard approach to just create a sub subtype, but there is also an approach that I would like to show you that I've had great success with that makes this a bit more generic because this can explode on you very quickly, especially if you have a situation where say here in Sweden, because this is just a split on a Swedish level. Imagine if we now then have, let's say that we have a a, a manufacturer of shoes or something like that and each of them they have their own APIs their own order information so they're gonna have to have a subtype as well and then the next company comes and wants to in, and wants to be on your platform and then they need a specific order all of a sudden you might have 10 20 I don't know how many order models that just represents this information it's all usually almost the same information but not quite and that can also get really dangerous when you have this inheritance system where right so you decide you decide to create a model because with the name up here because you know for a fact that the name is always going to be included it's just that oh shit six months from now there's someone with a new type of um, order requirement and they have something that is sort of like a name but it's not really a name because they have certain rules for what a name is going to be represented as and it can get like then we get into the override and like the classic object oriented problem with inheritance and stuff like that. So what I would like to show you is an approach that can actually help. It it makes the code a little bit more complicated, which is not a great thing. But if you know when to do this, I think it's a great thing. So let's rewind and let's think about what we're actually doing with the information that we're getting from our user here. So what basically is this? Well, it's basically just a set of fields. It's, a, it's information that we need in order to dispatch an order to whoever is going to provide this, the product to the customer, right? That's all it is. So instead of having a model like doing this, we kind of create types and sing, uh, these sorts of um, models in order to apply that business logic that we have within our own system. But it's not that often where we actually need to know what the user's name is or the email on the order. Like we have the user within our system, they have an account. And this information here is just a snapshot of this form. That's all it is. There is no correlation with the name here and what's on the user model. The user has the user model has a name and an email and like all that stuff. And that the reason why we want to keep those separate is because if, let's say for the sake of argument, that they buy a bunch of, bunch of stuff from us and then we reference the user model directly, then it then we're making an assumption. Maybe they don't actually want this order or this delivery to go to themselves. Maybe they're buying something for their grandmother or grandfather or something like that. And it's their information that is stored in the order model. So you don't really want that connection in to begin with. So what you can do is to just think about the fields of the form as a separate entity from the rest of the uh, from the rest of the order. Because as long as you don't really care about making any type like doing like operations on this information that has been inputted into the form, we're just actually treating it as information that we need in order to place the order and then that's going to be on the shipping label it's going to be in the request to the manufacturer and like all of this stuff then we can do this and what this is is just an array of a data type that stores the field information so what we're at, we're, we're basically creating a meta field or a property on our model that just contains all of the key values that we're actually submitting. So when we're storing this, we're not actually modeling it into some concrete type. We're just storing an array of fields, which is, well, if we have a look here, uh, let's look at the configuration here. So this is like, the, the, these are just the form fields that we're rendering out. So we're basically just storing the name and the type when we're rendering out the form. This is to keep this dynamic. And the same thing is true for for this field here. Like we're, we're, we don't have to store, have a property called name or email or something like that and then map that over to a type. We can just store this data structure instead. And this is just an enumeration here. You can see like this enum here just represents all the different types of information that we want. But it's just a form, it's just a string. So what's beautiful about this is that now we can have the exact same order, this exact same model, 
for all our use cases. And as long as, as long as we don't actually need to access these fields and get that information, it can it couldn't be easier for us. The one time I think that this has that this has been an issue for me is when, let's say, for the sake of argument, that you do need to access the information in one of these fields. Well, then you would have to do something like filter on this, and you would have to search for the information. You can still get the information; it's all there. It's just that it's not on the signature or like the at the at the type level. It's something that you have to at runtime pull out. You can almost think of it as doing this. Like if you put all the fields into an array like this, then everything, all the all these properties here, it would be the same thing as saying that, oh, all of this is optional. And the reason why it is, is because you don't, when you're searching for this array, it could be empty or some of it, this information can, can be here. You can, of course, validate this as at runtime. Do runtime validation and stuff of this nature to make sure that you always have all the information you need in order to create one of these orders here. It's just from the code perspective that you need to actually filter out all of this information and then instead of just doing a direct access as you do here where you just go into the user model and do dot email, dot phone, or something like that. So a bit of a utility function needs to happen here. But what I find very powerful about this is that now this order is completely generic. You can create a type string here, so or some type, just create a type, so that this scales extremely well. Like you can, you can onboard, it doesn't matter what form you're creating, it doesn't matter what the form the information needs to be, because it's, it's, so, it's so liquid, this model, that you could like a there can be a new shoemaker from Germany tomorrow that needs 50 fields on their form information. I hope, really hope that that doesn't happen. Poor, poor, poor users, but it could happen. Or there can come another requirement where okay, there's a Swedish or like this thing here. Now there's a field that represents something completely different. It's that flexible. You can always just create a type or a version number or something like that and then extend your models without having to change all the surrounding code. That you can't do with this. Because as soon as you change the signature or add another order here, then you need to add another case in all the places you have a switch statement to figure out, okay, what are you going to do in this scenario? And that usually creates a lot of boilerplate and it's especially in a loosely typed language. If you have a compiler or something like an exhaustive type check on your switch statements, then it's usually fine. So the last thing I want to show you was the admin thing. So what's very powerful about this, I believe, is that now that we have decoupled the types, like the, the fields of the form from the order information, we can actually create a dynamic field because one limitation of this order here is that let's say for the sake of argument that we have two shoemakers and one of the shoemakers well they need a personal number and the other one doesn't or the CSP or whatever or like an English order in one case they need I don't know the size of your feet or something like that and the other one doesn't because for some reason they know you're in the size of your feet then you would have to take the approach that either you have to check here in the form, like you have to render out different fields depending on who is actually who you're going to buy it from. And this is very common. You will see something like if Shoemaker A show these fields, if Shoemaker B show these fields, if Shoemaker C show these fields. Instead of doing that, because you create these fields as just a dynamic value, you can do this instead. So I have this, like, let's look at the views here. So I have a checkouts view here where all we're doing is that we take in a bunch of fields, these form fields that I showed you earlier, which are in these configuration files. And then I just render out dynamically the fields that are going to be in the form. That's it. And there is a connection here between the fields, like these field names is the connection here. Oh, sorry, that should actually be fields. So I'm guaranteed, oh, I can just keep them in strings right now, but as, as you can see, I'm guaranteed that there is a connection between the form information, like the name of the form field, and the fields that I'm actually going to store on my model, because this connection here, this enumeration. enumeration. So I can very fearlessly just render out all of these fields here, and then when this gets submitted in my app here, when I get this post here, I don't store this right now, but basically all that's going to happen, oh, not this one, uh, here, exactly. So when this gets submitted, then I could just extract this information and then just pull out 
the, the fields dynamically. It doesn't matter, like I, there's no hard-coded form, it's a dynamic form, it just renders out the information that I want. So I can just create a configuration file here, as you can see here, uh, the, uh, let's have a look here, there is this thing called en form fields, like these configuration files here, they are just the input to this function and then they render out all of these fields dynamically. So let's say for the sake of argument that here in Denmark we just decided that oh you know what no we're not gonna have CSP anymore. I'm just gonna move, remove that and then I go to Denmark and now I don't have that information anymore. It, does, it doesn't exist and let's say for the sake of argument that no you know what we actually Denmark they they have this thing that they are really they're really jealous at the, the Swedes for having personal numbers so now we're gonna add that in there and all of a sudden, oh, let's refresh it, and now the form actually has this information as well. And this makes this a very liquid form, like you can just, you can dynamically set what information that you require. And you don't have to be worried that your models will break, because the model has this as part of its requirements as well. The, and this is where the admin thing comes in. So I'm doing this through configurations now, but you could also do this even more dynamically. You could have something like this. Let's say that you have a content management system, like you don't sit here and take in requirements, but you have different people who sit on the manufacturer side and like they just want to be able to upload products and add things to your web shop or something like that. Like say Amazon, where they just provide the platform and then you have all these vendors and different manufacturers who manage their own portfolios, right? Then what you could do is that you could do something like this. You could just create an enumeration, which is exactly what I have done here. If we have a look at the admin here. So I do the same thing here. So I take all the fields, like the field names, this enumeration that we saw here, this thing here, and then I just render out all of these checkboxes. And then here on admin, like the fields, let's see here, fields are here in my configuration. So that's all it is. It's just an array of all of these fields, this, this enum that I have, that is now rendered out. So now, as the, like, as the manufacturer, I can just say that, okay, when I need, to, need a user to place an order, my company needs the name, the phone number, and CSP. But I don't need this other stuff. This creates a very liquid experience for the user where the user only inf inputs the exact information that they need without having to deal with all this other stuff. And this is all possible because we decided to keep, let's to, to create this decoupling between the, the actual model and the form information. So I hope that makes sense to you. I'm not saying that this is a good fit for every single use case. If you have stable models and you don't like, because this is really nice. If you have, because this takes away the ambiguity. This is more work to, to, to validate and make sure that like all you have all the information. Here it's very easy. The type is, all the information is already here. But here it's all optional and you have to check it out. But you should really, really consider having this approach if you have this use case where you have many, many, many very different models that all vary in some degree. And if you don't, and you want to avoid getting into like a switch statement hell, then if you can do this, try it because it works really, really well. I hope uh, that makes sense. So what I want you to take away from this is just that when we're dealing with models that that are sort of the same thing but they vary quite drastically in the information that you're storing. If it's something like an order or something of this nature it's actually very simple to just store the fields as an array or a sequence or a map or something like that to remove the type from uh, from those properties because you don't really need it. You don't really care about that information. That's just information that's going to go on the shipping label or something like that. So if you can abstract that away, you can actually create a very liquid, a very dynamic and liquid form that only asks for the exact information that it needs. Have a great day.